Hi guys, welcome to Football Therapist, my channel, and welcome to the first episode of the Red Bull Football series where I'm going to introduce the, the different Red Bull, uh, Red Bull Group football clubs and their different role and history within the, the Red Bull Group. Um, but before I start, uh, I'd like to remind you that the objective of a commercial society like Red Bull is to create profit. And a way to do so is precisely to, to get returns on money invested into a football club, whether through uh, bought or founded football clubs. There are then different ways for a club, uh, for a football club to, to generate money. The first one is to have media success. It, it is in my, and it is in my, opi in my opinion, the, the strategy that Red Bull chose at, at the beginning when they bought a, a club in New York in 2006. As this enabled them to, to sign different football stars like Juninho, Rafael Marquez, but, but above all Thierry Henry at the New York Red Bulls. These transfers uh, didn't cost them a lot of cash, if any, and even if they surely helped the team uh, from a footballing perspective, maybe by con maybe also by convincing other players to, to join as well, they brought uh, fans to the stadium and sponsoring sh uh, partnerships to the club, uh, which was of course really important. These players were actually the best way possible to attract interest uh, as they as their arrival made made the made the headlines uh, made the headlines in the city and the whole USA to 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 associate uh, Red Bull brand with this uh, the Red Bull brand with with them surely caused a lot of people to to buy to buy some of their cans uh, however there haven't been a lot of star signings at New York Red Bulls in, in, in the MLS in the recent years. There are several reasons to, to explain this change uh, inside the MLS. The first one is that the league uh, has introduced different rules uh, since then in order to avoid its clubs uh, going bankrupt and, and to help the, the, def the development of young American and Canadian players. Um, one of them being the famous salary cap, which though allows so-called designated players to have uh, a bigger salary than others, but these are still limited as well. And uh, the second one is that other clubs, mainly those from the Persian Gulf, uh, are able to to offer far better paid contracts be because the the owner don't even need their club to to generate profit as they are ri rich enough. Some owners just want to enjoy themselves. These two reasons explain explain why uh, New York Red Bulls have changed their original strategy by opting for young players that can be sold later on. They have sometimes still done relatively well in the recent years in the MLS, a league where there's always more competition due, due to the fact that investing into an MLS club is a great financial opportunity. In fact, uh, a new MLS season means fast always a new franchise in these recent years. However, New York isn't the first city where uh, Red Bull decided to implant itself, um, as, as the first one had to be Salzburg, the, the city around which the, the Red Bull group and its CEO Dietrich Mateschitz um, are based. This choice for the city of Mozart meant, however, that a different strategy to the one used in New, York, uh, in New York had to be put into practice, as big players didn't use to, to want to spend their last career seasons in, in, Austria, in Austria, and contrary to the USA. In Salzburg, people Indian don't speak English, and there isn't NBA, American football, baseball, or even American rap, which are often cri critical when when it comes to attracting players who also want to enjoy themselves otherwise than otherwise that, uh, than only with with football at the end of of their career, and we shouldn't uh, forget as well that Salzburg doesn't need media success in in Salzburg and in Austria, since they are already well known there. This is why um, Red Bull opted for success on a pitch from from the south with a club that 
that was already playing in first division uh, when they bought it. They then became rapidly Austrian champions under Trapattoni, um, a coach appointment uh, that s symbolizes this this desire to to have immediate uh, footballing success from from Red Bull. But the club uh, couldn't aspire to something more than being the best team in the country, uh, since great players didn't want to join a side that wasn't sure to play in European competition. As Salzburg needed first to go through several uh, difficult qualifying phases to access either Europa League or Champions League. Because of a success on the pitch, limited by these cir circum cir circumstances, uh, the club's revenues were limited as well. Red Bull uh, understood that very well, and since they wouldn't attract uh, confirmed players, they decided to create great players and sell them. With this objective, uh, Red Bull took over um, a, se a second tier league club from Sao Paulo in 2007, which is a strategic spot because a lot of talented Brazilian players from, come from the city. And in addition to this so called uh, Red Bull Brazil, the group also bought uh, an academy in Ghana in 2008. But the thing is, Red Bull wasn't very successful with youngsters uh, at first because only two players from Red Bull Brazil joined uh, Salzburg's first team. The, these two players being goalkeeper Coronel and current PSV player Ramayo. No player joined from the academy in Ghana, uh, however, which led to Red Bull deciding to, to, uh, to sell it in 2014. At the beginning, Red Bull haven't had much success in promoting uh, use in, in Salzburg neither, uh, since only Ilsanke and Hinteregger uh, um, are the only notable players that went through the, the academy in these early years. The reason for this was the difficult tra transition into a first team that didn't use to, to play the positional game style of football that Dutch coaches uh, had been implementing in the, in the academy. But all these changed in 2012 with the arrival of famous Ralf Rangnick as a sporting direc director. He didn't occupy this role only in Salzburg but also in Leipzig where uh, Red Bull bought a, a lower league club in, to, in 2009. Red Bull chose this German city mainly because there was an opportunity to, to take over the, the city's big stadium, which tells a lot about the, the Austrian company's intentions with this club. To have the success they, they can't have with Salzburg uh, by playing in the, in the Bundesliga. Um, uh, by playing the Bundesliga, sorry, they can indeed attract better players and, and therefore grow. Even if financial fair play, uh, fair, fair play might have had an influence in this, uh, Red Bull didn't throw money away in Leipzig as the club became bigger step by step. In order to have quality players without spending too much money, buying players from small, from small leagues is the way to go since transfer fees are lower there. And since Rangnick was sporting director both at Leipzig and at Salzburg, he knew exactly which players from the Austrian club would fit in the German team, which also enabled him to convince, uh, to convince these players to, to join Leipzig rather than going to another club or staying in Salzburg, since he knew both teams and their players very well. Partly with this idea in mind, uh, Rangnick introduced something at Leipzig and at Salzburg that benefited both clubs. It is a football identity. Rolf Rangnick is ended uh, at the origin of this constant desire to, to recover the ball, especially directly after losing it, in, in order to go as quickly as possible towards the, the opponent goal and, and this whatever the score may be. Uh, and this Red Bull identity is Salzburg's success secret since a few years, as it is a club that mainly relies on its academy players, because the principles of play are, are the same in, in every team at, at the club, whether it be the, the first or the youth teams. 
Therefore, uh, academy players usually adapt very well when joining the first team, which enable which enable enables the club to to sell some of their starters every year without suffering bad bad results later on. And that is precisely what the club is looking for: sell as many players uh, to sell as many wonder kids as possible in in order to make money while still having success in Austria. And since Leipzig has the same style of play, Salzburg's youngsters are a superb opportunity uh, for them to, to get good players that can fit quickly at the correct price. To buy, to buy, buy, uh, to buy players that leave Salzburg at about um, 22 years old also means that it won't be a problem to resell them, whether they are, well, whether they are performing well or not, since they will still be young after a few seasons at Leipzig. At about 25 years old, uh, years of age, offers will arrive. As these are, as these are good deal for, uh, good deals for, for everyone, it's not a surprise that a lot of players first, first played for, for Salzburg, sometimes as a loanee, before joining Leipzig later on. Gulakshi, uh, Hans Wolf, Sabitza, Laima, Ilsankre, uh, Upamecano, Nabi Keita, Kampel, Chobotlai, Haidara, Wang Hichan, and former Leipzig, uh, Leipzig coach Jesse Marsh all joined the, the German club from, from Austria, from Austria. Current Salzburg coach Jaisle made it the other way around though. Uh, he first coached at Leipzig's academy, then at Salzburg's, uh, before taking in the, 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 the Austrian club's first team last summer. These names and their posts illustrate this Leipzig Salzburg connection very well. 2012 is, uh, is therefore the year of change at Red Bull, and even if Ralf Rangnick is not Rasenball Sport Leipzig and FC Red Bull Salzburg sport, sporting director anymore since 2015, these two clubs have still done pretty well since pretty well since uh, since then by following the path shown by, by the German. New Salzburg sporting director Christopher Freund has, has been doing a, a brilliant job for, for instance, and if we look at the list of managers both clubs have had since uh, since 2012, a certain continuity in the style of play stands out, even, even though Ralf Rangnick left in the meantime. Uh, at Salzburg, they've had uh, Roger Schnitt, Adi Hütte, Peter Zeidler, Oscar Garcia Runient, uh, even if he is rather a, a positional game oriented coach. Uh, we then have Marco Rose and his assistant René Maric, Jesse Marsh, and now Jaisle. And at Leipzig, this Red Bull game identity also comes to our mind when looking at the list of coaches that they have had in these recent years. Ralph Rangnick managed uh, two times the first teams. The first team once once with with Jesse Marsh as an assistant, but Leipzig also had has Nuttel, Nagelsmann, and now Tedesco, without forgetting Jesse Marsh, who has already been mentioned before. Talking about Jesse Marsh, what is funny is that before coming to Europe, he uh, before he came to Europe, he was New York's uh, New York Red Bulls coach. Um, so far. I think it only mentioned some links between Salzburg and, and Leipzig since uh, Ragnick, Ragnick's arrival in 2012. But one has to know that another key appointment was made at the same time. I'm, making, uh, I'm talking here about former French manager uh, Gérard Rouillet, who has pre precisely worked at Red Bull uh, as, head, as head of football. Through his role, he established this Red Bull identity over C or better say it, in New York and Brazil. Between 2019 and 2020, Paul Mitchell, uh, another sporting director, also worked for, for Red Bull's two non-European clubs, in fact. This shows, uh, once again, the, the Austrian firms wish to have a, a similar style of play uh, in, in, the, in the whole teams, and as a consequence, Jesse Marsh is not the only one to have gone through different uh, Red Bull clubs, and I'm not talk uh, and I'm not only talking about Salzburg and Leipzig here. I've already mentioned players 
Ramon Liu and Coronel who joined the Austrian club from Red Bulls in Brazil. And the same Coronel was just signed for New York Red Bulls from, from Salzburg, precisely. Talking about the American club, two of their former players, Tyler Adams and Gordon Clark, have already signed for, for Leipzig. And if we look at the coaches, we can mention um, Ger uh, Gerard Struber, a former Salzburg Academy manager that is now a New York Red Bull's first team coach. All this shows that this Red Bull identity of play facilitates the adaptation of players and coaches that already went through a Red Bull club. And even though Gérard Rouillet passed to, uh, sadly passed away in uh, 2020 and Ralf Rangnick left Red Bull uh, on a permanent basis that year after a 12 months uh, comeback as a sporting dire director, I do think that Red Bull has a great potential when it comes to having success on a pitch through its different clubs that thanks to their, to their shared identity of play. And the best way to accomplish it is surely to copy, to copy what Salzburg has been putting into practice for a few years. Red Bull have their best academy uh, there if you look at the list of players that have broken through afterwards. And it is not a surprise since, as mentioned, the first team is mainly made of former academy players. In fact, they've uh, a very well developed scouting network that brought them not only uh, Europe's best youngsters, but also the ones of Africa, America and Asia. So in my opinion, uh, it shouldn't be a problem to divide this walk between the different Red Bull clubs. Those from New York could scout in North and Central America, whereas Brazilian uh, club Red Bull Bragantino, which is, Beckham, which is becoming always more important since they since their boy in 2019 and their, fu and their fusion with Red Bull Brazil, uh, would be, uh, so this club would be responsible for, for, some, for South America, for instance. The thing is, RB Leipzig's academy might always stay uh, in the one of Salzburg's shadow that, that is already scouting everywhere in, in Europe, including in, in Germany. With that being said, uh, I do think, however, that they might find an agreement, an, an agreement uh, on this point, but Telfo has to stay the, the priority above, above all, since it's very difficult to to make it from Leipzig Academy to to the first teams, uh, to the first team as there isn't any other youth team after the the U19. The difference of level uh, of level being already tremendous between the U19 and and the professional uh, Bundesliga. It is even more complicated to gain a spot in the first team in a, in a competitive club le, le, like Leipzig, which is the best Red Bull club has, uh, which is the best uh, Red Bull, yeah, which is the best Red, uh, club Red Bull has, um, at least so far, since there are rumors that the Austrian firm would be keen on buying other clubs from other leagues. We'll have to keep an eye on, we'll have to keep an eye on, an eye on this. So to summarize, I'm really op optimistic about these Red Bull clubs and I'm not talking um, only about the four current ones, but also the, but also the, about the other ones, should, should there be any. Because whether it be at a scouting or, or at a talent development uh, level, they could all uh, surely have the possibility to, to learn from the best uh, Red Bull Salzburg, in, in fact. And talking about the work that, that is done there, it is precisely going to be the, the topic of my next video. So if you don't want to miss out on, on the reasons of the, the Austrian club's success, I invite you to subscribe to, to my YouTube channel, uh, as well as to my Twitter and Instagram profiles. If you have enjoyed this video, please don't forget to drop me a like, write it down in the comment section below, and share the video. The, that would help. That will help me a lot, more than, more than you think. Bye!